<laughs> well, I hope, uh, I hope you understood something, because I understood nothing of all that, right? I didn't understand what I was saying at all. But I hope it was good. Um, so, as I said already, a big thank you to uh, Fausto, but on a more serious point, one-to-one. Um, -one. Why am I going to talk to you about one-to-ones today? Well, this started, the history of this started about 30 years ago when I was a young manager. So you can guess my age, you probably get it wrong. Not too much, please. But in any case, I've got 40 years of experience as a manager, so you can guess my age <laughs> if you want. But in any case, how I started uh, one day when I was a young manager, I'll tell you a story. You like stories? You like stories? Yeah? I'll tell you a little story. Uh, I asked one of my senior colleagues, I said to him, I said, could you tell me what I should improve in my management style or what I should improve in my leadership style today? What can I do better than I'm doing now? And he said, I'll tell you what, Rob, we'll see each other in a week's time. I'll let you think about the question you just asked me and I'm going to think about it very seriously. This lasted a week, one week. So I thought, right, this is going to last at least two hours, this discussion. It lasted about 30 seconds. <laughs> The discussion lasted 30 seconds. Because what he said to me, we sat down in my office, I'd asked him, because he's a senior colleague, he's got 40 years of experience, so I'm just starting. I said to him, what can you tell me about what I should be doing as a manager? You know what he said to me? Can you guess what he said to me? Someone speaks French here? Yeah? No? Personne? Si. On est? What he said to me was, on est maître de nos silences et prisonnier de nos paroles. Huh? So we're masters of our silence and prisoners of what we say. You get it? So there was immediately after this, what he said to me, there was a huge silence for about five minutes <laughs> while I digested what he just said to me. Because basically what he said to me was, you speak too much. You speak too much. And as we all know, Jimi Hendrix, you all like Jimi Hendrix? You all Jimi Hendrix fans? No, none of you are. <laughs> Otherwise there would have been a massive explosion of joy. <laughs> Okay, but Jimi Hendrix did tell us, he said to us one thing very important. He said that knowledge speaks, but wisdom listens. Do you understand? Knowledge speaks, but wisdom listens. Okay, it's better in French, but anyway, I'm not going to do it in French. So I'll start off now with something I wasn't going to do, but I'm going to talk about when. You know what a one-to-one -one meeting is? I'm going to explain it to you if you don't. But before that, I'm going to say something about when you should have a one-to-one. -one you think you should have a one-to-one -one conversation with someone? I'll explain exactly what it is after, just after lunch. Do you think that's a good idea? To have a one-to-one -one discussion with someone, a serious discussion with anyone after lunch. You think it's a good idea? What's happening to you now, right now? What happens after lunch? Your blood sugar level, yeah, drops. And what happens to you? You fall asleep. Your attention is the lowest of the whole day. So if you're gonna have a serious discussion with someone, don't do it just after lunch. Should you do it during lunch? During lunch, do you think it's a good idea? No, it's not good. Because the person that's facing you, your employee, who you're talking with, what's he gonna do? Is he gonna eat anything? Or she's gonna eat something? No. Because every time they try and put something in their mouth, you're gonna be speaking to them. And they've been told, because they're polite and they're young and they've been brought up well, don't speak with your mouth full, yeah? So they're not... <laughs> They're not going to eat. They're just going to speak to you. Yeah? You're going to ruin their lunch. Okay? Do you think Friday night is a good idea? Friday night? What are you thinking about on Friday night? You don't have to go into details. We don't need the details. <laughs> now, what, what, you're thinking about going out. Yeah? You're thinking about doing something with your friends. But you're really not thinking about, oh, let's have a serious discussion about what we did this week. Yeah? At 7 o'clock on a Friday evening. Yeah? Okay? Let's pretend you work in a shop and you're at the kiss. You know? You're passing someone shopping, okay? And the person comes and says, we are going to have our one-to-one -one meeting right now with you, okay? But there's a huge queue of about a mile long here. But we'll do it now. Not a good idea. Saturday night, accident and emergency ward in the hospital, yeah? So the, the director of the hospital comes and says, we'll do all the uh, one-to-ones on Saturday night. Is that a good idea? No. People are too busy. They're not thinking about it. They're not in the situation at all. They're not even there mentally. Okay, so it's very important. So now I'll start with describing what a one-to-one -one really is. The mere fact you take time to meet people with individuals is already a mark of respect, and it's also a recognition for the person. You recognize someone. You're actually spending some of your time. There's a lot of talk about teams today. 
But I'm here to tell you, and all the other intimates are going to be very angry with me, <laughs> that's not a question of teamwork. First, it's a question of knowing who's in your team, yeah? And knowing how to deal with each individual member of your team. Knowing how to, because everyone, there's the one-size-fits-all management. Does one size fit everyone? Is everyone the same? Do you all have the same dreams? Do you all have the same dreams? Do you all have the same aspirations? Do you all have the same things, the way of looking at things? Are you all the same background? Do you all come from the same places? Do you all have the same families? The answer to all these questions is no. So how could you possibly think there's one style of management that's going to fit everyone? It's not going to happen, yeah? So you need to make it very, very individual at the beginning. Afterwards, you can always talk about yeah, coaching the team and having objectives which join the team together and cause co cohesion, coordination, all that. But the start, if each individual in that team doesn't understand they're respected and that they're important to you as an individual, you're never going to make a team. So what exactly are one-to-one -one meetings? First and foremost, a meeting where you'll be spending time with an individual from your team, as opposed to, well, that's quite obvious, isn't it, yeah? You're spending one-to-one, -one. <laughs> not one-to-ten, not one-to-twenty, not one-to-hundred. It's an in not an informal meeting. It's not next to the coffee machine. Ah, tutta va bene, va bravo, mi chiamo Rob. No, mi amo. it's not that, okay? It's not next to the coffee machine, you're not having coffee. You do that, of course. You have to be social with your people. But this is a formal meeting. You have to sit down. You have to allow the time. And as I said already, give the respect to the person and give your time to that person, that individual. You have to concentrate on one person. During this meeting, you're going to discuss things with the employer team member in a formal and structured way. Formal and structured means what? It means, for example, you're going to have to take notes. Yeah? There's going to have to be minutes. Because what's the worst thing that can happen in a meeting? You've all had meetings with managers in your life? I'll take that as a huge no. <laughs> Silence. You all had meetings? Some successful, some not so successful, I imagine, yeah? Sometimes if someone doesn't even listen to you, yeah, that can happen. But at the end of the day, if there's no structure, what's going to happen the next time you have a meeting? You've no minutes. So you're going to talk about the same thing again, and then you're going to talk about it next month again, and then again. And everyone's going to be bored stiff, yeah? So you have to have structured meetings. And when I say structured, it means you'll have at the start of the meeting, you have to welcome the person. When you welcome someone to a meeting, is it important how you welcome someone? Is it really important? I'm here to tell you that it is. And it's not just about being polite. When you say to someone, please come in, it's lovely to see you again today. If I was still, please come into my office. Have a seat. Would you like something to drink? Would you like some water? Or whiskey? No, no whiskey. No, no. No whiskey. <laughs> but uh, do you like some tea, some coffee? Yeah? Okay, have a seat. Have some glass of water too? Yes. Is the temperature okay for you in the room? Is everything fine for you? Yeah? Let's go ahead. How's the family? Family's fine? I know the family's important for you. Anything happening in the family? Any new things happening in your family? And then you start to talk about the objectives. Yeah? Only then. You don't invite someone into your office and immediately say, just have a seat for you're supposed to. <laughs> okay, your objective about the financial uh, return on this investment. Well, actually, I don't agree with your figures at all. No, it's, you start like that, the meeting's finished very fast. Huh? So it has to be this welcome. Then you start to talk about the objectives. And then you go into more detail about HR in the, in the teams, what's happening on the shop floor, the operations, and all this kind of thing. It's not a meeting where the employees call to the office with no forewarning. This happens to everyone all the time. Please come to the office. What's the first thing that happens in an employee's head when they're told to come to the office and they don't know why? You're going to get disciplined. You. <laughs> okay, that's what's going on in their mind. They're not thinking, oh, this is going to be great. The manager wants to see me. <laughs> no, normally it's not that. They're going to think, oh, I'm going to get criticized for something. Something's going wrong. Okay. So you mustn't do that. He's got to be called to the office and know why, or he or she, why they're coming. It's not a quick chat. It's a meeting which should be highly participative in nature. You all know the rule of uh, Pareto? Pareto? Pareto. Is it mieux in Italian? No. <laughs> voilà. Pareto, 80-20. Yes? 80-20. You all know the 80-20 rule? Okay. So when you say it's participative, who's speaking 80% of the time and who's listening? 
80% of the time. Who's listening 80% of the time? Yeah, and how much is he talking? 80 plus? Well done, 20. Makes 100. So that's it, yeah? So God gave us all, if you believe in God, that is. But he gave us all anyway. He gave us two ears and one mouth. One mouth. Managers must always remember this. Oh, that's an astonishing book, that, yeah? I don't know if I was to talk to you about that. That's an astonishing book. You should read that. And the first one-to-one, you must explain to your team members. Now, this is the very first time you have a one-to-one with your team member because some of them won't understand why you have to have a formal and structured meeting with them every month. They won't understand. They'll think, well, why are we doing this? We didn't do this before. So you have to be able to explain and tell them and make them understand that this is to their advantage. You have to sell it to them, yeah? Make sure they understand that you're giving time so that at the end of the year, you don't get a massive surprise when you do your evaluation, your yearly evaluation, discover, oh, by the way, young man, you've failed all your objectives this year. But we didn't see each other this year, but the objectives from last year, you failed everything, okay? So I'd expect much better this year, yeah? In fact, we'll have some discipline now because it was really not good at all. That's no good, is it? That's not what an evaluation should be about at the end of the year. And how do you avoid that? You meet the person regularly, you have milestones. You see the person once a month, and you go through all the objectives, yeah? You ask, do you have the resources? Do you have everything you need to make sure you're getting these objectives? Is something happening in the outside, like the COVID, yeah? Or the political situation in the world, which has actually made your objective impossible to attain, but we still keep the same objective? Of course not. You can't do that. So you need to see people. One of the reasons for these meetings is that I really need to hear more about your ideas and how we can improve things on the shop floor. This is when you're convincing someone of the importance of a one-to-one. -one. It's just an idea. Or we need to spend more time together to look over and track the yearly objectives, uh, which will allow adjustments if and when necessary. It's what I just said to you a second ago. The anatomy of a one-to-one. One-to-one -one meetings should last for anywhere between one to one and a half hours. It's not a five-minute discussion, but it's not a three-hour or four-hour discussion either, yeah? You leave that for the end of the year, once a year. But it's at least an hour to an hour and a half because you've got several things to look at. I already said, you have to take time to give a proper welcome. Then you have to go through the objectives. Most people in most organizations, if they're well-structured, you won't have more than four or five objectives. Oh, my God, I've got 10. Well, if you've got 10, <laughs> they're probably not very smart objectives, yeah? Okay? That's too much. And the leader that gave you 10 objectives shouldn't be a leader. There should always be written minutes of these meetings. I already said that. For the obvious reasons, you want to repeat yourself 15 times. You have the same thing over and over. You just bore your people. The meetings should always be scheduled well in advance so the person's prepared. Okay? You don't invite someone to a meeting and say, by the way, you're invited to a meeting. Like, I'm not going to tell you what it's about. It's a surprise. That's no good, is it? You want to have time to prepare mentally. You want to have time to actually participate. If you ask someone to participate, they have to know what the meeting's about, yeah? The agenda, they have to have the meeting minutes, they have to have an agenda. There should always be a clear agenda for the meeting. I just said that. <laughs> be as participative as possible. That means speak as little as possible. But which questions? Do you know what the five WH questions are? This is just for all of you. You want to solve a problem, any problem, you can put it on a piece of paper or you can write it down. You can solve it, yeah? 5WH. Right? What, why, when, where, who, how. That's it. You write those questions to yourself, any complex problem you'll be able to solve it, or at least have the start of a solution to your problem, yeah? And this is how you run a one-to-one. -one. Have a clear purpose. Why are we having this meeting? Well, we're having this meeting in order to avoid ending at the end of the year and having to discipline you instead of congratulating you on the great year you just had, yeah? That's one of the reasons. Have adequate time for an in-depth discussion. Adequate time means you make the time. It means also that your iPhone, or your whatever you have, or your Oppo, your iPhone, or whatever what you have in Italy. What do you have in Italy? What's your phones? iPhones? Yeah. Okay. So it's in the drawer, OK? And it's switched off. And you've told your secretary, you don't come in here during this one and a half hours. This is private time. Uh, this is time, which is special time. You've given that special time to this person. You don't take it away again, yeah? That's a lack of respect. 
You know what they say about promises? Do you know what people say about promises? Yeah? If you make a promise, what do you get? Hope. When you keep your promise, what do you get? Respect and trust. Trust. Okay? So you have to keep your promises to people. Keep your promise. Be clearly defined what exactly you're going to discuss. Well, I just discussed some of the things, some of the elements. Be frequent at least once a month, but not once a week, not once every two days, because then the person doesn't, doesn't have time to think about what you said the last time. So why are you going to have that meeting? For what? To do what? Yeah? Okay, have a coffee with the guy if you need to, yeah? But there's no need to have a one-to-one -one formal every single week because you're going to just be discussing the same thing over and over and over again. There's no use. Be formal. Minutes. We already talked about that. Be a source of commitment to action for all concerned. I loved Oleg's thing about vision. Do you all like the vision thing, the vision code? No? You all bought the book yet? You should have. <laughs> Do you know the Japanese proverb for vision? Yeah? No? No one? Vision without action, now listen carefully, vision without action is a daydream. Yeah? Action without vision is a nightmare. Do you understand? Okay, so remember that. So there has to be commitment to action. How the person is getting along in general. So <laughs> this is always a point of contention with some of my colleagues, uh, you know, the universities where I teach. And they're saying, yeah, but Rob, it doesn't really matter, does it? You know, how the person is getting on? Well, yeah, it does. If you see someone walks into a meeting, yeah, and they're crying, you're going to insist on using the agenda for the one-to-one -one that day? Do you think? Say, oh, listen, oh, I've just brought up my boyfriend or my husband's left or whatever. Whatever it could be, it can be a serious personal problem, an issue. And you say, no, no, that's not professional. We won't discuss that. You're going to create trust like that with the person? It doesn't mean you can solve the problem. We're not all experts on everything, yeah? We can't all be uh, uh, psychologists. We can't all be uh, psychi psychiatric nurses. But we can listen, listen. Again, it comes back to listening. Just listen, show some empathy. Empathy was already mentioned earlier on today. It's so important to show empathy in these situations. If you don't, you'll lose the person forever. How are they getting along with other team members? Particularly important when the person is new to the organization. This, as you all know, when you're new somewhere, yeah, and you get welcome to the team and say, by the way, your workstation's over there, just go and start working, it's fine. <laughs> they don't even show you where the toilets are. That's not so good, is it? I need to go to the toilet. I don't know where they are. Okay, I want to go and eat something in the cafeteria. I don't know where it is. Okay, this is no good. Okay, and that's only the beginning. Yeah, you haven't even started talking about company culture, how things work in this company, so the person doesn't make silly mistakes at the beginning. Yeah, you avoid these mistakes for them by giving them the right information at the start. How things are going on the shop floor? Well, you know what the shop floor means, yeah? Where everyone's doing the real work, not you. Everyone that's working with you that's doing the real work. You want to know how to make things better. Who are you going to ask yourself? Are you going to sit in your office strategizing like a genius for the next uh, 10 hours? Getting a sore head? No. In the one-to-one, -one, you ask the expert who knows 10 times more about it than you do. Huh? How can I fix this? That's what you do. It's a lot more efficient and effective. And efficiency and effective is not the same thing. Yeah? You all understand the difference between efficiency and effectiveness? Do you all know Peter Drucker, who he is? Huh? Peter Drucker, you've heard of him? So, there's something that's called doing the right thing, yeah, is a lot better than doing the thing right all the time, okay? This is Peter Drucker, okay? So you can do the right thing all the time. You can do something right all the time, but you might not be doing the right thing because you didn't talk to the person concerned, okay? So it's very important. Okay, discussion about areas for improvement in the operations, obviously. Discussion regarding his or her objectives, obviously. And you know, all know I'm not going to teach you about smart objectives. I'm not here to give a college lecture, right? <laughs> but uh, you all know about smart objectives anyway, I suppose. If you want to learn much more about them, read my new book. <laughs> okay, discussion regarding his objectives. A discussion about resources. Does the team member have adequate resources? I already said that. Especially if outside influences change. Yeah, the outside environment impacts what you're doing. Then you have to adjust the objectives. You don't leave the same ones that you had at the beginning of the year. You cannot do that. It's not fair. Again, you lose the person. Okay? They will no longer be working for you, whether you think so or not. Okay. So, what's that? 
Oh, yeah, I never forget these meetings are privileged moments for your team members where they should always have your absolute and undivided attention. I can't insist enough on this. You don't answer the phone. You don't look at your phone. You don't send an SMS. Just hold on one second, young man. I'm coming back. We've just got an important call to make. Which means that you are not what? You're not important. The phone call is important. You know. Okay? So don't do that. Okay, relationship based on mutual confidence and trust. That's already been talked a lot about today. And I think someone later on is going to talk more about trust. So I'm not going to talk about trust to you. Someone else is going to do that later. Oh, I did that all on my own. Can you imagine that? How long that took me? <laughs> okay, let's now take a more critical look at just why these meetings are so important for all the stakeholders in the organization. Why are they important? Well... Why, let's have a look at what the 26th President of the United States said. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Right? And that's yeah, Theodore Roosevelt. Okay? So, if he thought that, he was a pretty brilliant guy. Okay? So, if people don't care. And care, what is the word, the acronym, care? What does it mean? Care. What does care mean? Do you all have businesses? Do you all have a business? Yeah? Are you entrepreneur? You have a business? You work? Yeah? No? Yes, no? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so what's important? Oh, sorry. What's important uh, when you're doing this? The word care, you all have customers, yeah? The word care, the acronym from me, this is mine. <laughs> customers are really everything, yeah? But you, as leaders, your first customer is not the customer that's walking in the shop door. Your very first customer is your employee. And they need to have your time, and you need to concentrate on them, because it's them that are giving the business to the front line. Yeah? Okay? And J.W. Marriott, the founder of the biggest hotel company in the world, which is Marriott, obviously, because of J.W. Marriott. So he said, he said, take care of your people. They'll take care of your customers, and the business will take care of itself. And he made a fortune, didn't he, J.W. Marriott? He's right. Recognition is important to everyone. You all build relationships, don't you? You all have relationships. You have sisters, you have brothers, you have lovers, you have wives, you have friends, you have husbands. Okay? You spend time with these people, no? That's how you build trust, no? You build trust one conversation at a time. It's not when you first meet someone in a bar, hi, you're pretty. <laughs> yeah, so what? I don't trust you. You know, you can spike my drink. What are you going to do? <laughs> okay? No. It takes... Weeks, I know. Took me what, about a year and a half with my wife. <laughs> yeah, really, it was a lot of work. Huh? So, recognition is important because there are a lot of reliable sources and statistics that show over 50% of people lose their job, leave, sorry, their jobs because of poor relationships with their direct boss. And that's not just made up. That's from the Gallup polls. Yeah, studies on the work studies in the American workplace, okay? And that's why we have the great resignation today, because people do not know how to manage individuals, okay? That's why we're having the great resignation in the United States. Because people need to have a specific purpose at work. They need to know what they're, it's like Oleg said earlier on, people need to know why they're there, they need a purpose, yeah? So if you don't have specific objectives, they don't know where they're going, you're not leading them properly, so, you know, to something that everyone agrees on, you're going to lose everyone, okay? Not just one person, but the whole team. Smart objectives. Oh, no. Okay, I'll just do it fast. <laughs> you all know that. Okay, because external factors. Okay, we already said that. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so. Pastel. We all know what a pastel is, yeah? Yes, we all went to school, so it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> okay, so it's political, economic, social, technological, environmental, and legal. And these are all the things that can affect your business which you have absolutely no control over, yeah? But what you do have control over is that when you have these impacts from outside, you can sit down with your team and the individuals in your team and you can adjust the objectives you already made to match what's happening in the external environment. That's what you can do as a leader. So they allow you to share valuable information with your team members, put in another way. If you don't meet with your subordinates at all, You'll have no information, and you'll have no information on which to base your decisions. Okay, there's nothing worse than not knowing what's going on in the shop floor. You have your own business, 
I don't know what they're doing because I don't talk to them. That's a shame, isn't it? Yeah? Do you talk to your wife? If you don't talk to your wife, well, good luck with that. Yeah? Someone else will be talking to her very soon. <laughs> okay? So it'll be the same with your employees. Yeah? If you don't take care of your employees, your competitor will. That's absolutely certain. If you don't meet with your subordinates on a regular basis, the information that you'll have risks to be out of date. Yeah? So I talked to the person once a year, it's fine. Yeah, but in the meantime, innovation has overtaken us 15 times during that time. Yeah, and we're now completely obsolete, and nothing that we're doing is actually anything to do with the market we're working in anymore. That's brilliant, isn't it? That's fantastic. Fantastico. Huh? Is that right in Italian? Fantastico. <laughs> oh, so if you do meet with your people on a regular basis, be much more likely to avoid situations outlined in one and two above, obviously because it allows for better time management by avoiding unnecessary visits. You've all had this. You all have an office, yeah? People come to the door and say, hi, can I see you just for a minute? Is it always a minute? It's never a minute. It's an hour, two hours. The guy takes your whole life away from you. <laughs> you end up having no time to do anything. So this avoids that. Proper planning. You can all finish this for me. Proper planning prevents... Poor performance. So why would you plan all your projects, yeah, and then not plan your meetings with your most vital resource, your employees? Why would you do that? Yeah? This is where the most important planning happens. This is where everything happens. This is where vision happens, yeah? All I was talking about earlier is here. It's not anywhere else. Proper planning prevents poor performance. You can add a sixth P, but it's very rude. Can you imagine? Proper planning prevents piss poor performance. <laughs> Two. Oh. In summary, the reasons we should hire out one to one meetings are. Oh, that's me. Didn't recognize myself. <laughs> recognize the importance of individuals. Didn't you recognize myself there? Monitor performance during the course of the year. Adjust objectives if and when necessary. We already talked about that. Heighten the engagement, motivation, remember? We were talked about twice or three times today, the importance of engagement, being committed to the team, yeah? At least three people already talked about that today, yeah? So that's extremely important. Reduce unnecessary training and recruitment costs. How much does one line employee cost on average? A line employee, someone that's entering the work market. How much does that cost if that person leaves on average in dollars? Does anyone know? 20,000 is a bit high. It's 5,000, but this is 5,000 for the person that's cleaning your toilets, believe it or not. Okay? $5,000. 20,000 if the person's got two years' experience, yeah? If it's a manager, middle manager, it's $30,000. Senior manager, $40,000, $50,000, yeah? General manager, we're already $80,000. Yeah, CEO, $250,000. Why? Recruitment, training, the time lost, productivity lost. It's a massive equation, yeah? And yet, how little time do we spend ensuring we keep the good people? We don't do it enough. This is why one-to-ones are so important. Another reason why. Ensure better decision-making, obviously. If you don't have the information, well, you make a decision based on what? Well, I think, I'm sitting in my ivory tower up here in my office in the 30th floor, and I think this is happening. Did you know? No, not unless you talk to people who are actually doing the work, as we already said. Create the opportunity to pick up on great ideas from the employees. What if that employee you didn't talk to last week had the game changer? You know what a game changer is, yeah? Changes the entire outlook for your business. Changes the entire vision of your business. Changes how you do business, yeah? Makes you millions. Most of the time, these things come from the people that are actually doing the jobs, yeah? Not the genius at the top, huh? Why do you think the Japanese invited quality circles? Do you know what quality circles are? Even the guy at the bottom, his word, has the same worth as a CEO. Huh? This is something that should be transferred more into our European culture. Find out how team members feel, obviously. You have to know how they feel. You have to know them. Don't forget their name. That's annoying, isn't it, Foster? Yeah. Hi, you, uh, you, you, who are you again? <laughs> it's no good. Okay, better manage your time, of course. If you do one-to-ones, you're gonna avoid all this running out you know this firefighting, you're running after everyone saying, oh, did you do this yet? Did you get that objective done? Have you done that yet? No, no. You're wasting all this time. If you have formal one-to-ones, you don't need to waste all that time. You're using your time correctly, both your own time and their time. 
Oh, what we just looked at right now. Why one-to-one -one meetings are so important? Yes, we just looked at that. Now let's take a look at when to carry out one-to-one -one meetings, yeah? Well, we already talked about oh, we already talked about when, didn't we? And when not to, yeah? Did we not? What did we say? When not when not to do them then? Not during lunch, not just before the weekend. Yeah? Not during lunch. Especially if you have a boss. I had a boss once, it was really horrifying. I had to have lunch with him. He always wanted to have lunch with me. I don't know why. I was a bit suspicious at one point, but in any case, when he was eating, he couldn't stop doing this. I don't know if you know anyone like this. Do you know anyone that does that? Do you know anyone that does that when they're eating? You're facing them, you can see everything that's moving in their mouth, and it's, it's not so good, huh? You lose respect very fast. Okay? So, best times? Timing is everything. You've all heard that. Should be planned at a convenient time for both parties, team member and the manager. For example, not on a Friday evening, as we said. You should be planned at least once a month, not less, not more. Not plan these meetings just after lunch, obviously, like we said. Schedule meetings mid-morning or mid-afternoon. Why is that? The human biorhythm demands that. Mid-morning and mid-afternoon, you are the most productive that you'll be the whole day. You've heard everyone say, oh, I'm a night person, I'm a morning person. No, people are not. Biorhythms are important. It's physiological. It's not something you decide, all right? Your body requires a certain number of things. It's like the drink that I offered Foster when he came for his one-to-one, -one, yeah? Do you think it's just for fun I gave him a drink? Do you know how much uh, your concentration reduces as soon as your miniature dehydration starts? You're only thinking about something to drink. You're not thinking anymore about what the person's saying. Same thing when it's cold or too hot in your office. The person's no longer thinking about what you're saying. They're just thinking, I'm freezing cold. And where's all the blood from their head gone when you're freezing cold? Where does it go? To your fingers, to your toes. It doesn't stay here, okay? It's physiological again. But people forget this. You're in a room like this that's too hot. You can't think. You're falling asleep. You just had lunch, plus it's too hot. <laughs> So as everyone's the same, right? We're all the same. We're made the same way. So avoid these situations. It's very easy to avoid. Avoid too early in the morning or too late at night. Yeah, you know, when people aren't woken up. You can try and speak to someone. You know, do you know anyone that's uh, in a bad mood when they've not had a coffee in the morning? Someone that can't speak to anyone? Well, I, I can't speak to anyone at all in the morning. Unless I've had at least three coffees. Then I can start to speak and be polite. <laughs> okay, so not too early in the morning. Avoid planning one-to-one -one meetings when the activity is peak. Yeah, Saturday afternoon retail outlet. I just said that earlier on at the beginning. Lunchtime in a restaurant. Obviously, you say, your restaurant manager, come here, it's lunchtime. They've got 500 guests eating food, but you come and do your one-to-one -one now. It's a fantastic idea. Fantastic goal, huh? No? It's a fantastic idea again. 11 in the morning at a hotel when all the guests are checking out. That's fantastic, yeah? So you're going to have a queue of about a billion guests at the reception desk and no one at the reception. That's fantastic. A good idea again. <laughs> Obviously not. That's sarcasm. This is British sarcasm. Not French sarcasm, all right, because that's much worse. On a Friday or Saturday night at the police station or hospital, I already said. Where possible, schedule meetings on midweek days. What do you call the business week? Business week is when? It's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? No, no, we're productive on Monday too. No, you're not. The statistics prove this. Are you productive on Friday? No, you're not. The statistics also prove that. Okay? So you want to do the important things. The important things should be done on those days. Yeah? And not on Sunday when you're actually meant to be watching the football match. Or whatever you're watching, yeah? Do not carry out your one-to-one -one whilst eating with the person. Well, I just described to my ex-boss who... I saw, and one time, there's one time he had a piece of salad that was hanging from his, and I just thought, oh, God, this is, how am I going to tell him there's a piece of salad hanging from his mouth, you know? Awful. person whom you're doing one-to-one -one with will not be able to enjoy his or her meal in any case, so they won't enjoy the meal. They'll be too busy thinking, did I make a mistake? Did I say the right thing? Uh, I've not, yeah, I'm starving. Uh, <laughs> well, it's not a good thing. You're, in effect, impinging on what is considered a private or break time. So you're using that person's time for your own ends. That's not fair. That person's on a break. Leave them alone. Okay, just leave them alone. Listening will not be optimal on either side, especially if you're eating in a noisy canteen. What's the worst thing for human concentration, apart from what I said already, about heat, cold? There's also noise. 
if you're eating in a noisy canteen or there's a noisy people next to you, it's the worst thing for your focus of concentration, especially other people's voices. Because what does your ear do? On appelle ça en français, laisse traîner l'oreille. When you're at dinner, when there's 20 people there, do you have a deep conversation with someone? No. It's impossible. Because someone says a key word that you're used to hearing, and your ear is immediately over there. It's no longer listening to the person in front of you. Yeah? So remember that. No noise, especially people talking. Very quickly become an informal meeting rather than a formal meeting, obviously. Especially when you get a glass of wine, then no one's talking, they're all just getting drunk, and huh? that's it's finished. Okay, so it might sound like a lot of the proceeding involves more than excessive planning. You might think that's excessive planning, but it's not, I can assure you. If we even take all the things that I told you, and I'm sorry it's so fast, <laughs> but all the things that I told you already, and you put them end to end, you've reduced the effectiveness, not the efficiency, but the effectiveness of your meeting by 80%. If you do none of the things right, you might not as well hold the meeting at all. There's no point, okay? Too hot, too cold, too much noise, no meeting. No minutes, no meeting, yeah? Okay, all these things count. It's not excessive planning, it's correct planning. And what did we say about the five pieces of planning were? Young man, you weren't listening, were you? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. The five pieces of planning were? Proper planning prevents, not all at once, please. Proper planning prevents, well done, <laughs> okay? Prevents poor performance, exactly. Oh, it's me again. Oh, that's a surprise. Proper planning prevents poor performance. Also because it's the most important meeting that you'll have with your employee on a monthly basis, you must ensure the optimum conditions for communication and concentration on both sides. You're creating conditions within which your employee can succeed you're creating the conditions where your employee will succeed, not that you'll succeed, but your employee will. And henceforth, you will also succeed if your employee does. Yeah? That the meeting remains formal in nature, that every precaution is taken so as to ensure that the meeting is not only efficient in terms of timing, but taken for more, more effective, 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 effective. Not efficient. Efficient just means you do the same thing all the time. This means an effective way of doing things the way that will work for you and for your employee. So remember what we said at the beginning, your employees, yeah, your first customers as leaders, never forget, care. Customers are really everything, and your first customer as a leader and as a manager is your employee. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank sir. you. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. That's it.